Okay, let's start next topic, which is the purple layers in the search model. Uh, this section is very important because uh, they help us to understand what is the current structure of um, network protocol. And uh, then we can go to the second chapter, which is application layer. So um, we ha I will have to take some time to uh, deal with the protocol layers and uh, how those um, experts um, design the service model of the internet. Okay, the first one, um, things in the network are very, very complex. So uh, there are several different uh, modules or what we say pieces need to be considered when you designed a new computer network. Uh, it includes there are several hosts with several different operating systems and uh, several routers. Okay, and as we know, uh, in the first beginning, uh, the routers runs on circuit switch, but uh, currently we have packet switching mechanism. So there are different types of routers, and then of course, uh, depending on the um, material science, uh, we have different uh, materials to um, build a link. For example, we have covers, we have um, fiber, or you can use uh, uh, the wave to transfer signals. So that's various of media. And of course, we can run several different applications on the internet. For example, uh, email, web serving, um, file sharing, and so on and so forth. And of course, there's some different protocols help us to transmit packet from one host to another host to do a routing, to do the forwarding, to transmit uh, signals on the on the uh, on wireless link and so on and so forth. And of course, there are several new hardwares and softwares. And um, since there are so many pieces, and how do we combine all those pieces into a one integrated um, system to transmit messages from one application to uh, via those medias, those different routers to the remote destination. So that is a very difficult problem. So uh, is there any hope of organizing structure of network? And of course, uh, the those experts, okay, they provide layers, the concept of layers to uh, modulize different functionality of the network structure. So, and then um, they give us a reference model. A reference model is that um, theoretically, those functionality can be divided into different layers and we combine these layers to construct the entire internet. But before we go into the um, detailed discussion of the reference model and the layers, um, the textbooks provide um, an example. To, uh, to let a student to uh, understand what is the concept of layering. Um, but I think this example is not like uh, good enough. So I'd like to uh, show you another example, which is um, mail delivery. Okay. So uh, that is, um, if you would like to send a mail, I, I mean physical mail, okay, from you, to maybe your uh, your family, okay. Uh, the first things you have to do is to you write your messages, right? You write your message on the paper, and the language you use the uh, the language you use should be uh, understand understood by both peers, right? If you write English, you use expect the readers can read English. If you write in Chinese, you expect the re readers can read um, Chinese. So there should be two entity, okay? Uh, for example, the sender is right at the right, right hand side, okay? Sender and receiver. Both, both of the sender and receiver should understand what kind of language, what kind of symbols are used in the, in the message. And then um, this message will be uh, <clears throat> will be put into an envelope, right? So uh, basically, there should be an 
envelope, right? And on the envelope, you should write some uh, information. For example, the sender's address, the receiver's address, the receiver's name, and <clears throat> zip code, something like that. Okay, and you can you uh, you put this envelope to uh, you bring this envelope to the post office and send it via post office, right? So basically, the post office do not know what message you wrote in this envelope, right? But the 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 post office knows the symbol or the label on the envelope. So it knows where this comes from and where this should go and what is the zip code of the both addresses, right? So basically, you have a common language which is which is the labels on the envelope, right? So after that, okay, maybe we change it, uh, change in other color. After that, the post office will collect. For example, uh, if this, if your uh, later uh, will be sent to the, for example, United States, okay. So the post office will collect all the envelopes that goes to the United States, and they will put all those envelopes in the mail bag, right? So there should be another bag, right? Mail bag, and of course there are some uh, information. For example, there are some barcode or QR code on the mail bag, or they just simply write, "Okay, this mail bag is from Taiwan to uh, to the United States." Okay, so this mail bag will go to the airport, of course, or they will go to the uh, the port, uh, waiting for be transmitted to uh, will be waited for be transferred to the United States, right? So this is a mailbag. So of course, there are some information written on the mailbag. After that, the mailbag might be, okay, put into a very, very big box, mailbox, cargo box, or, or we say cargo box. And of course, in this single cargo box, there might be several different mail bags from different post office, right? So uh, you have to think about one thing. Um, there, yeah, for each, we say for each um, color right here, they are processed by different entities, and the outer entity, they don't have to know. What exactly <clears throat> in that, for example, cargo box? The only thing they have to know is to understand what is the information written on that label, right? For example, the, the, the circle labels on the cargo box. Okay, so the 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 uh, for example, airplane uh, the cargo cargo airplane. They don't have. They don't have to know what is the message inside the green part. What is the uh, envelope information on the blue part, or what is the information in the purple mailbox mailbag? The only thing they know is that there are some information on the cargo box which is in red, and those information is uh, is uh, good enough for the cargo airplane to transmit this special cargo box from. Taiwan to, for example, United States, Los Angeles Airport. So that is what we call layering, or we call encapsulation. Okay. So after uh, this airplane goes to uh, to the to the Los Angeles Airport, okay, um, uh, the workers will um, <coughs> get this cargo box. Okay, and unbox, right? Unbox the cargo box and see the mail, uh, the mail bag encapsulated in the cargo box, right? So the post office at the Los Angeles post office, okay? Um, they, they they can see the mailbox and the, uh, sorry, they can see the mail bag and the mail bag, the labels, the information on the labels, 
has good enough information to help the post office in the Los Angeles to deliver those purple mail back to different post office in the Los Angeles or or in different uh, different states or countries in the in the California. Okay, and after those purple mail back comes to the post, local post office, and they will uh, again unbox the mail bag and see the blue envelopes, see the information on the blue envelopes, and the postman, okay, they can read the information on on the envelope and see, okay, that goes to uh, some uh, some uh, neighborhood or some uh, small some some area so the mailman will deliver this blue envelope okay according to the information on the envelope to the household and then the receiver can again unbox the envelope and see the message inside this um uh, on, on the on the later Okay, so so you can see that um, uh, because it is a very complex uh, process when you do such kind of mail delivery. So uh, basically, we simply just uh, put different layers on the top of the underlying layers, and so on, so forth, so on, so forth. And the upper layer, which means that, for example, the cargo box, don't have to, uh, does not have to know what information has been included, content in the in the cargo box. And so on and so forth. But for each different entities, for example, you and the receiver and the mailman in the Taiwan and the mailman in the United States and the post office in the uh in in Taiwan, uh in, in Taipei and the post office in California, they have they, they, they know each other's information because it is written on the labels, the corresponding labels. So that they can operate, they can know how to operate, how to proceed such kind of um, uh, mail delivery. So I think that's a, uh, so uh, I think it is a quite good example for you to understand uh, under a very complex system, how do we design different layers to serve uh, the upper layers. So that is the reason why we use this word right here. Okay, service model. Okay, so each layer it implements a services, a service. Okay, so uh, of course it has different functionality. For example, a mail, mail, mail link, or as we may, as we mentioned in this class, we have to do packet delivery, right? So it relies on services provided by the lower level. So um, if you have time, you can take a look at uh, the, this example, which is uh, ticket purchasing um, <clears throat> in, in the textbooks. But I think a mail delivery is a much better uh, example to explain the uh, layered um, structure to deal with a very complex system. Okay, so uh, make sure you understand this, uh, this kind of uh, structures. Uh, however, um, for each following chapter in this textbook, we talk about one layer in each chapter. So uh, if you still not quite understand why we need layering, why, uh, how many layers we have in, 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 uh, in internet, and uh, what is the reason why we do so. So uh, be patient because we will, we will talk about in the following uh, maybe 10 weeks or uh, 12 weeks. Okay, so um, that is the layering. So here we have some uh, te some text right here. Uh, why layering approach to design or discussing uh, complex systems? So um, as we know, uh, packet delivery involves several different roles: hosts and uh, routers, and uh, the media, and uh, uh, store and forward routing, and some so uh, operating system software hardware that too complex. So um uh we we have explicit explicit structure allows identification relationship of systems pieces 
So that is what we call layered reference model. So that we, uh, uh, security experts, uh, network experts, or protocol experts, we can discuss what kind of functionality we talk about in such kind of reference model and which layer we are talking about. Okay. And as we know, um, with the advance of new technologies, new materials, uh, we have maybe we have new uh, in the decades ago, we have only copper wire, right? But now we have fiber. So um, modularization makes it more easy -er for us to maintain the functionality at different layer. When we update the, uh, the physical link, we can simply just uh, replace one layer with another implementation. For example, uh, 40 years ago, we have only copper wires. So the physical layer, which I mean the uh, wired link, has only one implementation, which is copper wire. Right? But now we have fiber, so we can replace this layer, which is copper wired, by fiber or by electromagnetic wave to do signal transfer. Okay, so um, change in layer service implementation. Okay, so it is transparent to the rest of the system because you only change the implementation inside a layer. However, the boundary between different layers, which I mean right here, those labels is the way you communicate with the up layer and the, and the under layer, right? So those labels, as, as long as those labels, the information in these labels does not change. So we can still uh, encapsulate different implementation in under and layer. For example, um, let's see. For example, um, let's see. Um, if there is a mailbag right here, right? But you can encapsulate Okay, this mailbox right here. You can encapsulate the mail back by using another service, for example, ship. Cargo ship. All right? But the cargo ship still has almost the same information written on the um on its labels. So the the receiver of this cargo, uh, cargo ship con container still know how to unpack this cargo ship box and obtain the inside mailbags. And the rest of the thing is exactly the same as we uh, ma mail this uh, mailbag through airplane. No matter if it is uh, we, we mail it using a, a airplane cargo box or use a ship cargo box, it doesn't matter. Because the mailbox is still, is still the same, it still has the uh, enough information for the post office to deliver this mailbag, to deliver the mail inside the mailbag. Okay, so we can simply just replace different layers to um, to have different type, different implementation, service implementation. Okay, um, so uh, I think that is. Uh, the reason why we, we, we use such kind of layering structures because um, modularization is very nice. So we can replace it with different implementation, but, but having same functionality, okay? So um, here is a, a simplified explanation of the layered structure used by the current internet. Okay, so we call it layered internet protocol stack. Okay, as you can see that there are five different layers, right, at the right-hand side. However, uh, the numbers written here is layer one, layer two, layer three, layer four, and layer seven. Because in the first beginning, the reference model designed by the, um, the, the researchers or um, 
uh, in maybe I think maybe thirty years, uh, thirty or forty years ago, they designed seven different layers. But at the end, I think the simple is beauty. So they simply just uh, they they don't think layers five and layer six is necessary in this current uh, internet protocol stack. So they simply just remove uh, layer five and layer seven. But um, we usually said. Uh, we usually consider that the the application layer right here is layer number seven and not layer number five. Okay, so have to uh, uh, notice that usually we say internet has five layers, but it is layer one, two, three, four, and layer seven. We simply just don't use layer five and layer six. Okay, so um, so right here that is one, two. Three, four, and seven. Okay, let's take a look at the lowest layer, which is called physical layer. So basically, um, of course, it is an oversimplified uh, the explanation. We'll talk about those layers in the following chapters. Um, physical layer is the the way that uh, its functionalities help the network interface car to define what is a bit. A bit. How do how do you represent a bit in a specific media? For example, you know, uh, in the copper wire or in a in a fiber line, uh, it is uh, due to the physical um, property. Uh, we have different ways to represent a bit in a fiber or a bit in a copper wire. It is very very different. So we have several. Um, Different uh, material, and then we will have several different uh, physical layer protocols. Okay, so that is layer one. And usually, uh, students in the MIS department just uh, usually we don't care about how physical layer works because they belongs to double uh, E students, they double uh, E students or students in um, material uh, science. They will. They, 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 they deal with such kind of uh, protocol design and the material design. Okay, so that is layer one. And in this textbook, we, we will not cover too much. Uh, we'll not, basically, we will not cover physical layer. Okay, so that is. Okay, the second, the second layer on the top of physical layer is link layer. Or sometimes we call it data link layer. Okay, so when we see link layer or data link layer, they are the same. Okay, um, so after that, after we know how to represent one bit in the media, and then, okay, between two neighboring network elements, uh, usually are two network interface card. Okay, um, they need to transfer lots of bit, right? Lots of bit. So basically, uh, the frame. Right here, that is lots of bit. A frame contains lots of bit, and a frame is the basic unit you transfer something from one network element to the other network element, which is between two network cards. Okay, so frame is the basic unit, but uh, it depends on different. Um, Protocols, for example, on internet, internet which is the wired network, right? So, uh, in a in a, uh, we usually write it in this way. Okay, we have two element, and there's there are two network interface card attached on the host, a host and b host, right? They transfer different signals on that media, uh, which is the internet. Right. Okay. So, uh, of course, the the physical layer already defined how to define a bit, right? But you have maybe uh ten thousand bit need to transfer from one internet inter inter uh from one network interface card to the other network interface card. Okay. For example, this side, uh, this this direction. Okay. However, there's always some other um, users, okay, 
For example, C. A, B, C, they are neighbors. They attach to the same uh, Ethernet network. Okay, so when A transfer lots of bit from A to B, sometimes C want to transfer a frame as well. So A, B, C should uh, should have a protocol. This protocol can manage or arrange, okay, when A can transmit and how long it can transmit. And if there's any interference, A and B, how, how do they recover such kind of uh, interference? And when A transfer a, a frame, which is a little bit, to B, and at the same time, C should not send any bit, right? Because those bits will interfere the bits transferring from A to B. <clears throat> okay, so there are some protocols they discuss how network interface card to transfer lots of bit in a media. And in this kind of media, there may be more than one, two, three, or even more network interface card in this media. And the signals may interface with each other. The packet might be lost or something like that. So data link layer, which is layer two, it should guarantee how a transfer a correct frame from A to B, something like that. Okay, of course there are certain there's some other uh, certain um, data link layer protocol. For example, for for wireless, it might be looks like um, this one. A and B has antenna, right? And it has a transmission range. Okay, and the C might be right here. It has antenna as well, and C might cover A and B. So in in wired media and in wireless media, the data link layer should be a little bit different because the the uh, transmission, the propagation of signal, they might be different. So we have two. We have several different data link layer protocols to um, transfer uh, a frame between neighboring network elements. Okay, so after we can successfully um, transfer a lot of bit, which is a frame from A to B, from your, from, your uh, from one host to another host, the other upper layer protocol is network layer. Okay, so think about one thing. If I have a source right here and I have a destination right here, and here's a router one, here's a router two, something like that, and we like to transfer a bunch of data from source to the destination. And of course, in this specific green media, we have some certain physical layer protocol to deal with how to define a bit in this green link and for the data link layer we have to define several different um, protocol to help the source to send a frame successfully from s to r1 right no matter if there's any other for example r3 right here because they share the media so we have to we have to have a protocol to add, arrange okay how s1 uh, so how S, R1, and R3 to send messages in a shared media. Okay, so that is the data link there. Um, when, the, when, when the frame from S to R1, and R1 is a router because it, R1 is not the destination of this, this frame. So R1 should run a network layer protocol, which is routing protocol. It's right here which is a routing protocol, to help the R1 to decide which direction this frame should go. And of course, it should go to the right-hand side from R1 to R2. But the media or the link between R1 and R2 might be different from the green line. For example, the blue line right here between R1 and R2, it might be a wireless 
network, which is Wi-Fi, for example. And R1 should use different physical layer protocols to communicate with R1's uh, internet network interface card with R2's network interface card, right? And there might be some other entities, okay, around R1 and R2 in the shared wireless media, right? So the interference uh, might happen. There are some packet loss, some uh, noise might happen. So they have used different data link layer between R1, R4, and R2. So that R1 can successfully forward the message from received from S and forward it from R1 to R2. But how R1 knows the, direc the, direc the direction should be at the right hand side. It depends on the network layer, routing protocols. So the routing protocols in R1, R2, and S, they will collaborate, make a, a collaborate, um, decide a path that the packet can be sent from source to the destination. So the routing, uh, the routing algorithm, the routing protocols, they send, they send the packet in a way which we call end to end host. That means no matter what is the underlying data link layer they use, those routers use, no matter what kind of physical layer, which is media, they use in between S1 to D. Okay, the routing protocols on S, R1, and R2 will forward the packet from S to R1 to R2 and finally to the destination D. So basically, uh, the packet then will arrive to the destination host. So we call it the end-to-end -end host transmission. Okay, then network protocol deals with such kind of routing and uh, forwarding. And then after the information has <clears throat> been sent to the destination D, okay, the next layer is transport layer. Okay, transport layer. Uh, as we know, in a single host, okay, it might have several different processes. For example, uh, you have a web web browser, you have a word processor, and uh, or you 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 uh, you. There are lots of processes. Okay, you can um, open on on your on your operating system, right? So basically, when when the packet, when the information, when the packet, when the message arrive at the destination, the operating system. The, dis, uh, the operation system of the destination should know which process should can get this data, right? So uh, there's uh, some transport layer protocols, okay, at the source operation system and in the destination operating system. Those two programs in the operating system, they have, they, um, they are. Uh, they should create a tunnel, for example, a tunnel, to help the processes in the source and the processes in the destination. They can communicate with each other. So, with the help of operating system, process at the source and the process at the destination, they can send messages. Okay, because there are several, several different process in the source and in the destination. They have to know which exact which process is exactly the one you would like to uh, send a message or receive the message. Okay, so that is transport layer. Okay. So uh, at best that is application layer. After uh the explicit process receive the information, okay at last the message okay arrives. So uh uh, the format of the message, the uh, language used in the message, the encoding, the method in the, in the message, or is, is there any encryption or decryption 
message in the in in this matter it really doesn't matter okay as long as as long as the two entities which is the two applications and the source and destination they know how to uh, parse or how to read or how to understand the information information in the message and that's that is okay that's good enough okay so for example uh, if you um if you uh, play a, a video game uh, play a game in your um, in your PC and uh, you have a process right, of a game game program right and it's connected to the game server which is some somewhere in a remote uh, host where there's a program so these two programs they communicate with, with each other uh, to um, they send several messages to represent for example your uh, the the um, for example, for RPG games, uh, the, the, you have to send informations, information of your position, what kind of weapon you use, uh, what is your uh, 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 um, a skill, something like that. Okay, as long as the message in the messages, the information of the message, you you can understand the information in your message, and the game server understand the the your, your message. That's good enough. So you can design your own game messages okay so it is it is part of the game protocols so what we call application protocols and of course when you do a web surfing you use your web browser and connect it to for example google's web server right as long as these two programs know how to trans transfer um, the html file which is the web page and that is good enough okay so different applications they design different uh uh, message format, different uh, actions after you re receive the messages, different um, orders of this message. Okay, so that is how uh, application <coughs> layer works. Okay, so uh, by using these five layers, then we can uh, do, for example, we, we, there are several different um, uh, concepts, right? In the physical layer, they deal with the media. In the data link layer, they deal with the, how do you transfer a bunch of, of bits among a shared media from the network interface card to the other network interface card, right? And the network layer, they do routing. So they can transfer the packet from the source to the destination using, uh, using different link layer or physical layer. And they do such kind of forwarding in different hubs. Right, and then at the, the destination, the operating system has transport layer protocols that can um, deliver the message, deliver the message from, uh, deliver the message uh, received from the network interface card to a specific to explicit uh, processes, and after the process get the messages, the message can be any arbitrary protocol, okay, represent different applications. So that is the uh, five layers that we use right now in internet okay a little bit complex but um you will gradually understand different uh the functionality of different layers in the in the following chapters so if you have if you still have some uh if you still feel uh confused or something uh just uh keep patient okay so um here and again the 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 textbook okay this this slide uh they explain what we has what i have explained before but uh, we can see um we can still go over it again okay so uh we start from the upper layer okay which is uh which is the application layer okay we have the uh, left hand side we have source at uh, right hand side we have the de destination host okay there so there are two programs they are trying to communicate with each other by using the message right so uh, that is the message msg okay the message application exchange packages to implement some application service okay okay so that message will be delivered to the underlying layer which is um uh, usually this part is the app controlled by the app that is controlled by the operating system that is somehow hardware okay so after the app would like to deliver the message from the source to the destination, the message will be transferred to the operating system and the transport layer protocols will uh, deal with such kind of uh, message. And then the messages, which is the uh, green part, 
will attached will be attached a label which is what we called um, header. So the T right here is transport layer, uh, transport layer. So it is a transport layer headers which is attached in front of the message. Okay. So uh, in the, in this in the, uh, right now this red part is called um, segment. Okay. The green one is called message. Okay. So just like what we 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 mentioned in the uh, post office uh, mail de delivery, that is that specific label is created by the transport layer protocol, and it, it will specify some information that needed to transfer from the source to the destination process. Okay, so there are some as we as we mentioned before, transport layer deals with the process information. So here in the header of the transport layer at the left hand side, the source should attach several information about the process you would like to connect it to. So after that, after this red segment comes into the transport layer at the destination. The transport layer protocols at the destination would take a uh, uh, would read the information in the red segment header, or how we call transport layer header, and it was uh, the information in the headers will let the transport layer protocol at the right hand side to understand. Okay, that is for a specific process at the destination so it will unpack so um it will unpack the segment and only deliver the message to a specific process or to a specific application okay so that is very uh similar to the mail uh, the mail, mail deliver which i mentioned before Okay, so here transport layer protocols encapsulate application layer messages M with transport layer headers, which is HT, to create a transport layer segment. Okay, so at the left hand side, there's a program to deal with the uh, transport layer protocol. Okay, and the right hand side at the destination, there's still another program to deal with the transport layer protocol. And these two entities, they use the segment which is the red one to communicate with each other and to serve the upper layer application. Okay. That is the segment. So, and, and again, the segment right here, okay, has need to be passed to the network layer, which is in the upper system of the uh, at the source host. Okay, so after that, this specific red segment has to be encapsulated in the purport, which we called um, datagram. Okay, by the network layer protocol. Okay, and as it it's, it's, it's almost the same, okay? So right here, at the destination, after the link layer received information, uh, received, uh, received uh, the datagram, okay? The datagram will be passed to the network layer at the destination, and then it will be unpacked. Again, the purple headers will be unpacked, and the segment will be passed to the transport layer protocol. Okay, so it's data. So link layer will pass the datagram to the network layer at the destination. The network layer will still will again unpack the datagram to get the segment and pass it to the transport layer protocol.
So that is, okay? So again, it's the same. Network layer protocol encapsulate segment with network layer header HN to create a datagram. Okay, so it, it's, it's, it is almost the same. So let's take a look at this, this the, the final graph. Okay, so at the end, sorry. So at the end, the data link layer at the source need to encapsulate the datagram with link layer headers to create a frame. So frame is a bunch of a bunch of bits. So the physical layer can transfer a bunch of those bits in the media, okay, and pass it to to the next stop. And the physical layer will pick all those bits, right? And pass the frame, which is a bundle bit, to the, the uh, data link layer, right? And then, again, unpack to get a diagram and send it to the network layer. And again, unpack to segment and send the segment to the transfer layer. And again, unpack the segment to get a message and send a message to the application. So that is the uh, layering structure or uh, what we call encapsulation process between the source and the destination. That is how it works. That's what, that is why we call this service model because underlying protocols need to serve the up layer protocols. Okay, so that is. Um, here we have another um, Encapsulate end-to-end -end view. Uh, if possible, I'd like to um, remove something because I think it, it is not uh, it, it is not good to write to explain some complex um, concept right now in this in uh, chapter one. So, um, if possible, I'd like to remove some element. Okay. So uh, here it is. I think that's good enough. Okay. So in this figure, we have three different entities, which is a source and a destination and the routers right here, right? So uh, as we mentioned before, uh, the application at the source has a message, which is M, need, be, uh, need to be transferred. So the message, which is the green one, okay, and goes to the transfer layer, okay? So the operating system will def deal with such kind of messages <clears throat> and create the corresponding segment right here, right? So the segment encapsulate the messages and then <clears throat> goes to the network layer and we create a diagram and goes to the data link layer, we create a frame. <clears throat> so uh, notice that um, here we have a line. Mm, okay, I, I draw it again right here. We use different colors right here, okay? <clears throat> so for the source, okay, for the source, there's a specific pink line between source and destination, okay? For example, they use wired. Wired Ethernet. Okay, so the frame right here and the datagram right here, they have to, um, <clears throat> they have to um, align with how Ethernet send a bit and send a bunch of bit. So the diagram at the source and the frame at the source. Okay, the link layer. Uh, sorry, the link layer. Sorry, again, uh, sorry, um, a little bit misleading. It should be right here and here. Bits. The physical layer used right here and the data link used right here should um, align with the media used between S and R. For example, uh, it is Ethernet. So physical layer and data link layer should use Ethernet protocol at layer one and layer two to send bits and a bunch of bits between source and the router, 
Well, so that is. So at the right hand side, when the packet, when the signal comes in, okay, it has several bits, right? It's right here and it's frame. Sorry. The bits received by the R and the frame received by the R, they are O under Ethernet protocols. Okay, so after that, we can obtain the uh, the purple one. Purple. That is the purple one, right? So after that, we can get the purple <clears throat> diagram at the router. And the router take a look at the information. <clears throat> Sorry, they have to take a look at the information and the telegram header. So it knows, okay, this packet should be transferred for to be further forward to the D to the destination. So they have to calculate the path, calculate which port it should use to transfer this kind this telegram. So after that, this telegram comes to here. However, the, uh, let's see, uh, the light green one, okay? However, the link between D and R, they use wireless link. So at this moment, right here, the layer two protocol and the layer one protocol used between R and D which is, is different from their layer one and layer two protocols used between D and S. So R should encapsulate the diagram again, but using the Wi-Fi protocol to encapsulate the diagram, to create a frame, to create a little bit and send, <clears throat> send a message by using uh, magnetic uh, electromagnetic wave to transfer data from R to D. And then this information comes to D and it is uh, aligned with Wi Fi's protocol, for example. And then again, to do um, unpacking, and then do unpacking, and then do unpacking. And until the corresponding program process get the message, so that is the end-to-end -end view of um, encapsulation. Okay, so that is okay. So um, I think that is the 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 material in in the first chapter. So that is that's all. Okay, if I have any problems, to uh, take some time to take to take a look at the, the test textbook. Okay, and the, the final one is the history of the um, internet. Okay, so um, we can simply just take a look at uh, the, the test in the textbook. It introduced a uh, one uh, famous uh, internet expert. Okay, his name is uh, Leonardo Leonard, Leonard Kleinrock. Okay, Kleinrock is uh, currently um, he's eighty eight years old, and he's the professor in UCLA, and uh, he's the one who uh, design and create a packet switch in the ARPANET. Okay, as we mentioned before, ARPANET of, of originally it has only four uh, institute to join the ARPANET. Uh, UCLA is, is one of them, and the Kleinrock and his student. Um, uh, design and create the package switch routers. Okay, so I, I think we can uh, here it is. At the right hand side, it, it is the, the 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 machines they create for package switch routing. Okay, so uh, it's a very famous and um, the Leonardo uh, Karen Rock, uh He has many uh, PhD, uh, PhD students who is uh, from Taiwan. So uh, there are a lot of Taiwanese professors. Uh, they are Kairak students. And uh, um, my advisor is um, Kairak students student. So uh, basically, we, 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 that is the reason why we, we teach 
uh, computer network in in the university. Okay, I think that is um, that is what that is all um, for chapter one. So uh, let's stop right here. So the next hour will be chapter two.